Hello, welcome to Nursing with Professor B. My name is Bridget, I'm a family nurse practitioner. In today's video, I will be talking about the sudden collapse of Christian Erickson during a soccer game this past Saturday and how the swift action of his medical team saved his life. I will also be talking some about some common causes of cardiac arrest in young individuals such as young athletes. Before we get into this video, I do wanna offer a trigger warning Following content may be disturbing to some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Footage will be shown of Ericsson collapsing. Christian Ericsson, a Denmark midfielder, collapsed this past Saturday in the first half of his team's game against Finland at the Euro 2020 this past Saturday. His team doctor confirmed that he did suffer cardiac arrest. The swift action of his medical team is, is what saved Ericsson's life. Had it not been for their immediate action, he, may, he might not be with us today. This is exactly why knowing CPR or being BLS certified is so important. The medical team followed the AHA guidelines perfectly, which is the American Heart Association. I also want to give a shout out to his teammates that immediately noticed that he was in distress and they stopped the game very quickly. Everybody in that situation did such a phenomenal job to ensure that Erickson was safe. So first, when the medical team arrived on the scene, they checked for responsiveness. They did say that at first he was responsive, but then he lost responsiveness. They checked for a pulse. When no pulse was palpated, they began chest compressions until the AED arrived. So according to the American Heart Association, the correct order is CAP. So if someone doesn't have a pulse, you immediately start with chest compressions, which is what they did. And so when no pulse was palpated, they began chest compressions until the AED arrived. And when the AED arrived, they defibrillated Erickson and were able to bring him back. They only had to defibrillate him one time. This swift action prevented him from having to undergo more invasive measures, such as having to be intubated. It prevented any additional complications, such as potential brain damage from lack of oxygen, lack of blood flow. Erickson will be undergoing additional testing to see to find out what was the cause of cardiac arrest. The average cost of a defibrillator is between sixteen hundred to two thousand dollars. They do have more. They do have more expensive ones. But again, if you're a coach or a business owner, it's a small. It's a small, very small price to pay when you think that it could potentially save somebody's life. So let's discuss some common causes of cardiac arrest in young people. This is not all inclusive, but I will just touch on some of the most common ones. Well, first of all, what is cardiac arrest? The American Heart Association defines a cardiac arrest as the abrupt loss of heart function. Essentially, your heart stops. It's not the same thing as a heart attack. And a heart attack may cause cardiac arrest, but they're not the same thing. Heart attacks are caused by a blockage that stops blood flow to the heart. However, cardiac arrest is caused when the heart's electrical system malfunctions. The heart stops beating properly. So think of a heart attack as your pipes get clogged. And think of cardiac arrest as the electrical system in your heart short circuits. So think of the electricity in your house, the lights just going off, boom, you lost power. That's what happens in the heart. So the first one I will discuss is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. This is this is usually an inherited condition and the walls of the heart muscle thicken and the thickened muscle can disrupt the heart's electrical system, leading to fast or irregular heartbeats. Also, because of the thickened heart muscle, cardiac output is decreased because the muscle is so thick that not enough blood is in there. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is the most common cause of heart-related sudden death in people under 30, it's the most common identifiable cause of sudden death in athletes. And HCM often goes undetected. So of course, Erickson is, gonna, is going to undergo all the sorts of evaluations in order to determine what was the cause of his sudden cardiac arrest. There can also be coronary artery abnormalities. And this can be present at birth. Sometimes when people are born, their coronary arteries, the arteries in the heart, they're just connected abnormally. So think of it as you call in a plumber and he connects your tubing incorrectly. So your pipes are not connected correctly. And the arteries can become compressed during exercise and not provide proper blood flow to the heart. 
There's also th something called long QT syndrome, and this refers to the cardiac rhythm in the heart. This inherited heart rhythm can cause fast, chaotic heartbeats, often leading to fainting. And young people with long QT syndrome have an increased risk of sudden death. The heart can also have structural abnormalities that are present at birth. Myocarditis can be another reason for sudden cardiac arrest. Myocarditis is inflammation of the heart and it can be caused by viruses, which is why there was some speculation of did Erickson have COVID, but he didn't have a COVID shot and he never had COVID-19. So they do not think that he had myocarditis. Usually myocarditis will present with some sort of chest pain too. Are there, are there symptoms or red flags that you should be watching for? If there's, unexp if there's unexplained fainting, and this occurs, if this occurs during physical activity, it could be a sign that there's a problem with your heart. And if there's a family history of sudden cardiac death. In fact, when I'm performing physicals on young athletes, I actually, I always ask these two questions among others, but have you ever fainted during physical activity? And is there a family history of someone suddenly collapsing in your family, suddenly dying, especially during physical activity? If there's a family history of sudden cardiac death in the family before the age of 50, that's a huge red flag. I will send them out to cardiology and I will not sign off on their physical if they tell me that. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you turn on the notification bell. Leave a comment below what brought you to this video. Until next time.